Hey, what's happening, everybody? Welcome back to the re weekend recap on this uh, sweaty Sunday evening in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Thank you guys for being here. I figured there wouldn't be too many people on the stream tonight due to Eric being live, but I appreciate you guys for stopping in. Got a lot of stuff to show you this weekend. Um, baseball cards, packs, baseball memorabilia, action figures, toys, all kinds of cool stuff. So I'm going to dive right into it. I'm gonna first off, I'm gonna get this big Toys R Us hauler truck out of the way. Hey, Chris Weaver and everyone else that popped in, appreciate you being here. First thing up, this Toys R Us hauler, uh, Friday, I came back from vacation a little early from the beach with Eric and uh, wasn't feeling good with my headaches and whatnot. I went to uh, Rogers, which usually always leads to good stuff as far as toys and stuff go. So I hit up Rogers Friday. And uh, yesterday I didn't really go anywhere, and then today I went out to Altoona and found some more stuff. But this was the first one. This is pretty sick, too, because this is the old Jeffrey logo uh, for Toys R Us. This, as far as I know, is from the 70s, made by Ertl, E-R-T-L, the uh, die-cast truck manufacturer. And this was 20 bucks. so they went original one in 25 for it. I picked it up for 20 It's in pretty nice shape, too. Usually when you see these older die-cast trucks... Um, there's always like paint loss and everything else, but this one is pretty good as far as the logo goes. There's, uh, I don't know, some blemishes at the top, but most of the time, if you take a magic eraser, you can get that off. But pretty sick, still has the doors. A lot of times these are missing on these older trucks. But very nice piece here overall for 20 bucks. Joseph B says good deal to paid 40. Definitely, these, uh, these bounce around as far as price goes. Like there was one that sold on eBay the other day for like almost 200 bucks. So they, they really vary between like 60 and 200 bucks. So I thought 20 bucks was a super good deal. And uh, I'm not going to flip this. I'm going to keep it in my PC. I have a Hills truck as well and a couple other things. Thanks a lot, Boom Slang. I appreciate that. But that was the first thing I want to get that out of the way. I have so much stuff I can't fit it under the shot. There's more stuff off camera too. But uh, that's the first pickup. Uh, Joseph C says, is Toys R Us still coming back? You know what? They are. I've heard a lot of different rumors and stuff about Toys R Us. As far as I know, they are coming back. Um, they're like trying some different ideas out. They, they started Jeffrey's Toy Box and they were testing that out in like different stores. I want to say it was like a small setup in like TJ Maxx and things like that. Nothing like that around my area, but that was a test. I don't think it's coming back as Toys R Us though. I've heard different things, rumors bouncing around. I'm not sure what's going on. I also heard KB Toys was coming back last year. I haven't seen that yet. But Toys R Us, they're supposedly promising that they'll be back um, by the end of the year for Christmas. So. I guess we'll just wait and see what happens. Joseph C says, kids, they don't play with actual toys enough to justify large toy stores. That's very unfortunate, man. I mean, you're definitely right. Now it's all about iPads and stuff. Kids want to go to freaking uh, Best Buy and whatnot and get stuff, which really sucks. It's definitely a shame. Or just buy stuff off Amazon. The $5 Super Chat from Jonathan H. That says, Brittany Hayden, I hope you're starting to feel better. It's too bad the Gilkey jersey cursed you instead of John for giving it away. <laughs> sure you guys might know what he's referring to in his recent Fun Mail Friday where he got this uh, legendary Bernard Gilkey uh, relic, artifact, jersey that he was super pumped about. <laughs> Thank you very much for that, Jonathan H. Really appreciate that, man. And Boom Slice says, no flea markets today for me. Weather was supposed to be bad, so it turned out an okay day, so I missed out on any good deals. That really sucks. I hate when that happens, man. A lot of times you like see for there's bad weather if you're especially if you're making a trip somewhere like Altoona for me is like an hour away, so uh, or an hour and a half away. So it's kind of a trek out there. I got to check the weather first beforehand. But I've definitely gotten screwed over before and gotten somewhere like that and had it rain. But um, that was the first trip with the Toys R Us truck, and that was Friday. I also picked this up too. I always I'm always looking out for stuff for uh, different subscribers and whatnot who send me things. It's pretty cool. This is from uh, the Jose Canseco headline collection from starting lineup. I believe it was from the late uh, 80s, uh, 88. This is a piece of that um, figure. I think this was like a 50 cents or a buck or whatever. So I picked that up. I'll probably send that out to somebody. Someone will get the appreciation on that. Jose's 4040. And $2 Super Chat from Cody Marks says, John's chuckle makes me happy blessings to you, sir. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Foob Slang says, Damn, weatherman treats me like your mailman, John. <laughs> Uh, I can definitely relate to that. So I picked that and said, up a couple things off camera here. I picked these up today at a flea market. I'm sure you guys probably remember these, these old school um, folders made by Duo Tang Sports Shots. 
And like I said, I'm always looking for Conseco stuff because I feel like there's a constant um, craving for it from different subscribers and different people that are out to get Conseco. This is the 1989 Tops design here. When I was a kid, I had uh, Dave Winfield like this. I was so pumped about it to carry my paperwork and stuff and homework around in the Dave Winfield folder. It has the original AIM sticker on it too, so that's pretty cool. I think I paid a buck for this. Like I said, that will probably be sent off to somebody at some point to request it. And our super chat, John H. says, for, for five bucks, says, I want to find a Conseco missing tooth relic from his MMA attempts. <laughs> Thanks for that, man. That would be pretty epic. I wonder if that will pop up on eBay someday. And Taco Way says, today I found Doobie's Better Music album. If you know who I'm talking about, the record's vinyl. That's pretty awesome, man. Where'd you find that at? And the next one I picked up is Donnie Baseball, also Duo Tang folder from 89 Tops with the original aim sticker on it. So when I find these, I feel like these are kind of tough to find most of the time. So when I see them for a buck or 50 cents, I pick them up. Usually they send off the people that uh, are fans of the player. That's pretty awesome. Taco away, goodwill find. I usually never find anything good in there at all. And Paul else says, did you get an Al Padrique folder? I don't even know if they made an Al Padrique folder. They may have. I definitely remember what his 89 Tops card looked like. It's him fielding. I can't forget that because I want to say I took it and crinkled it up uh, one time. Maybe someday Eric will sing the Alpha Drique song for you guys, but don't hold your breath on that. So those are a couple pickups there off camera. Uh, ladies today, more Toys R Us stuff along the way of that. Toys R Us shirt, this is brand new. These were actually given to employees. I think that was five bucks. So I collect the uh, retail stuff from defunct stores. Toys R Us shirt there. I don't think it's my size though. Yeah, it is. It's an XL. I actually worked at Toys R Us for one day. Um... It's probably like 15 years ago, something like that. 10 or 15 years ago, I worked at Toys R Us for one day. And um, they were supposed to call me and let me know what day orientation started. They never called me, so I just didn't show up naturally. And then they fired me <laughs> over that. So it was one day. Uh, I think I went in there and filled out paperwork. And then I was supposed to come back from orientation, waiting for their phone call. Never got it, so just never went. And obviously, I was like 20 years old at the time, so... I didn't bother calling them and following up. I was just like, all right, well, if they want me to work for them, then they're going to call me. Never heard from them and got fired. <laughs> got fired before I started. So that was my Toys R Us work experience. Pretty hilarious. And a $2 super chat from Lloyd Abraham. It says, just sending some love from Canada. Hello, all. Thank you very much, Lloyd. I appreciate that, man. Very nice of you. And two bucks from Jonathan H. Right after that, it says, use your employee discount and left the truth. <laughs> I wish, man. I really wish I would have got to, got to take advantage of using the employee discount. I think the best place that I worked at in the past was Best Buy. Their employee discount there was freaking sick. It was so good. Like, I mean, it was mostly on accessories, but like, if there was like a fifty dollar accessory you needed, or like even a hundred dollar accessory you needed, like you'd get those for like two bucks. It was crazy. Like at cost, it was insane. Uh, the amount of money they pull in off accessories. It's like how they make all their money for the most part. And. Uh, Super Califragilicious Expialidocious says, are you a teacher like your brother? I am not. Um, I'm not. I work in the mental health field, actually. Um, very rewarding field to work in. Very trying as well at times. Next thing, this is a pickup from ladies as well. This is two bucks. This guy actually recognized me, which is pretty awesome. I don't have many people that recognize me out in the real world. So when someone says, hey, Pass is alive, I recognize you, or I watch your videos, it's a pretty awesome feeling. But this dude, I look forward to seeing him there every time I go because he always has Ghostbuster stuff and like other cool stuff. I want to say last time he was there, I bought a Coffs and Crooks VHS tape off him, which I never ever see. But uh, it's a pretty sweet Slimer Ghostbuster shirt. I think I want to say this is like from 2016 when they came out with a lot of merchandise when the uh, crappy reboot came out. Uh, that was the only good thing that came out of the reboot was all the new merch that hit the shelf. But this is like two bucks I want to say he gave it to me for. So that's pretty awesome. Still in the plastic Slimer shirt there. Doesn't fit me, but still, it's a size medium. Cool to have, regardless. So that was a that was a cool pickup from uh, from him. He didn't have a business card or anything, so I didn't catch his name. But uh, cool guy all around. So that was that. And then also from ladies, that's off camera. This is pretty cool too. A Batman and Robin vintage backpack from '95. And I don't know if this is ever actually even used. It's in pretty good shape. But uh, always a Batman and Robin fan. Not really the movie, but. Uh, the invention of Batman and Robin and Batman the Animated Series. Buck 75 for that. Pretty sweet for 1995 vintage book bag. I'm not sure if I'll keep this one or if it'll get sent off to somebody else, but uh, nice shape overall. 
the duo the duo there pretty cool Joseph Seats, I remember fitting the size of medium, 1990, a good year. Hello, hello. I couldn't tell you the last time I fit into a medium. It was, it was probably around the same time, honestly. And Talk of Wastes, Pass is Live or Brittany, any dog videos soon? I bet you uh, Brittany will probably have Charlie as a cameo appearance here sometime soon. I wouldn't doubt it. Picked up some singles, picked up a bunch of wax boxes, and also picked up a freaking candy cane. I'm sure you guys remember those candy canes from when we were younger that had a bunch of packs in them and stuff. That was also from Ladies. I had to buy that. It was originally like five bucks, and I could tell that the packs were ripped open. I was like, yeah, those packs were definitely ripped open already, so I don't really want to pay five bucks for it. What I really wanted it for the most is to get it and fill it up because I have one already um, from a recent video I did. So this Christmas, we're going to fill those up with packs and like rookie cards or whatever else and give them away. So now I have two to give away, which is pretty sweet. But we're going to tear that open, too. And Pinnacle Inside is in there, too. Scott Rowland. Not sure if he's actually even in there. But that was the most ridiculous idea ever um, when Score decided to release Pinnacle Inside. And it's just like, uh, I don't know, 10 cards in a can that were usually all banged up if you could find a can over to even get them out. <laughs> so we'll check out that and see, what, see what's up with that. But um, Rogers, another buy here. I like these. These take me back to the old days. Eric loves baseball talk. I'm sure you guys have heard him talk about it or seen his video uh, doing it. But these are sweet. I used to buy these uh, when I was a kid. I think Eric and I would like share them. But um, I want to say I paid a buck a piece for these. These can be, these are kind of valuable. Like if you look in the Beck and Almanac, the, according to the Beck and Almanac, these have some value to them, believe it or not. And pretty sick because they still have the original Children's Palace sticker on them. Child World, Children's Palace, my favorite toy store as a kid, Children's Palace and Hills. So pretty sick to see those. Made by LJN, the worst video game company of all time, if you know what I'm talking about as far as Angry Video Game Nerd YouTube channel goes. And $2 Super Chat from Jonathan H. It says, shout out Brittany for finding the candy cane. <laughs> that's, that's super funny. I didn't even see that she said that. It was sitting right out in plain view, and she's like, hey, did you see that? And I was like, I didn't even get a chance to look at that yet, but I guess you can have credit for finding it. But, um... Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to ripping those open. It looks like there's a bunch of Topps 2000 packs in there that are already sliced open, but uh, maybe we'll find something half decent in there. Chet Lemon is back from the dead. And RMM says, never heard of Children's Palace in Florida. That's pretty wild. I, thought, I could have sworn that uh, it was nationwide, but maybe there was never a down there. Um, baseball talk. You got some Hall of Famers here. Alan Trammell on the top. World Series from 86, Game 6. Um, Frank Viola on the front of here. Andres Galarraga, the big cat. Fred Lynn. And uh, Rod Carew, Dale Murphy, and some others on that one. A lot of these are repeats, too. Kirk Gibson, Lou Brock, Ozzie Guillen. Chris Rivers says we're about to make a welfare check. Call for you, Jet Lemon. Bobby Bowes in here. Brett Butler. Yaz. Pedro Guerrero was one of my favorites when I was a little kid. And Sparky Anderson. And here's a nice one, though. Pete Rose and Fisk, and Dave Parker and Sutcliffe. It's like some schmutz on there, but I have Google on to take that off. Rock Reigns, back when he was still going by Rock Reigns. Lou Whitaker. A lot of people think Whitaker should be in the Hall of Fame. Actually picked up some of his rookie cards. We'll see here in a second. So a couple repeats there of Rock Reigns. Not a bad one, though. Um, it's kind of weird how these are a little different. The text on there, set 39. But uh, pretty cool. Don Drysdale and Rock Reigns, both in those. And there's a nice one, too. Barry Bonds is hiding out here. And Al Kaline, my girlfriend's favorite player of all time. Al Kaline, as she calls him. And Lou Gehrig, Gwynn, Lee Smith, Carney Lansford. So a bunch of Hall of Famers in this pack. Nice one. Yount, Seaver, Cal Daniels, Mike Marshall. And the last one, uh, no one really too notable on that one. But for a buck, I figured I'd pick those up. I'm not sure if I'll send them off to people that request them or keep them or what I'll do with them. But still pretty cool. Hey, Legion. And everybody else. Um, so next thing we'll go over is these figures, which were a super good deal. This is Rogers, Ohio. Fine. A buck for an original Egon figure from 1986. Um, I have one on the card, but I don't have one loose. So no proton pack, no accessories. But for a dollar, I will never, ever pass up a real Ghostbusters figure, especially for an original Egon. Sick. So that'll go on my mantle, my uh, other loose action figures. 
And then these guys, of course, I'm sure a lot of you guys remember these. I actually did a video, uh, one of my first videos was on this series of real Ghostbusters. This is Haunted Humans. This is X-Cop. This is also um, from the same guy that I got the um, Slimer shirt off of and a couple other things, but X-Cop, pretty sick. I used to love this toy line when I was younger. Um, very, very cool. Still very cool, but I have him on the card, but I do not have him loose, so that also go on the mantle. But uh, very cool toy line. Commercials are really awesome and funny, too. X-Cop, Ghost there, and then uh, this last one, Hard Hat Horror Ghost. The Lumberjack here, which is also from the same line, Haunted Humans. And, um, put this up. Pretty sick toys, though, overall. I miss Super Chat, my girlfriend says. Sorry about that. I was getting too sucked into RGB land here. I did. Mark Liddick, $2 Super Chat. And it says, Super Chat for the AVGN reference. Well, thank you very much for that, Mark Liddick. Definitely a huge AVGN fan. Probably my favorite YouTuber ever, honestly. Um, just watched his recent, uh, his news video with Gilbert Gottfried on it. AVGN is absolutely hilarious. Love the guy. I wanted to go meet him. He did a recent, uh, Comic-Con. I want to say it was, like, closer to Philly, though. And I would definitely want to go out and meet him and get his autograph and get a picture of him. AVGN is so hilarious. If you guys, you know, enjoy vintage things, vintage video games, definitely check out Angry Video Game Nerd. It's absolutely hysterical. And a $5 Super Chat from Gourmade that says, we, we had Hulk Hogan and Macho Man versus Rainbow Dash and Elsa in a steel cage match at the Gore household today. Dads versus Daughters Toys, a match for the ages. Thank you very much for that Super Chat, Gourmade. Hopefully you made a video about it. If you haven't subscribed to Gourmade yet, please take a second, check him out. All you gotta do is go to the channel and click on subscribe and give him a sub. Very, very nice of you. And hopefully you made a video about that because I'd love to uh, check that out. And Talk Away says, have you seen LGR YouTuber videos? I can't say that I have. I really can't say that I have. And Ty Provision says, Dan Aykroyd came with the, with the whole concept for Ghostbusters. So that's the hard hat horror ghost there. Have them on the card too, but uh, not loose. I think those were, I want to say that guy gave me those two figures and um, the shirt for five bucks, which is an amazing deal for those. Very good deal. So that's that. Uh, also, digging through ladies. I love ladies flea market. Uh, any guys that are close to Altoona, definitely check it out. I want to say it runs until October, but uh, there's always good deals to be found there. Not so much baseball cards, but just other random stuff. Like, this is a pickup from ladies today. Heads up, baseball stars. I never saw these before. I'm sure some of you guys have seen these, but uh, this whole box was, I think, five bucks. This would be fun to rip open or just send off to somebody or whatever. But uh, they're heads of, obviously, MLB players. Griffey, Palmiro, Eckersley on the front here. And they have suction cups on the back of their heads. So there's 24 in the set. So I want to say there's 24 packs in here. I'm sure you get repeats and not get the whole set, but there's some good ones, though. Ryan Sandberg, Bo Jackson, Griffey, Will Clark, Tony Gwynn, Manning Lee, Curry Puckett. So a bunch of Hall of Famers. Sheffield, McGuire, all the big names. But uh, <laughs> Joseph B. says, I had those. Some are cool, some are creepy. <laughs> there's a $5 Super Chat and Boom Slang. It says, hey, John, heads up. There's a large card show on September 13th through the 15th at Valley Forge Casino. You can check it out at Philly Card Show. By the way, I'm 27 away from 500. Thanks so much, Boom Slang. I really appreciate that. I was actually talking about that in Eric's stream before I started my stream. Um, I was at an antique mall today, and a guy there by the name of Dave, who actually bought the Phil Necro rookie off of, that you see in the background. Dave, really cool guy. Um, he's the one who told me about that originally and said it was a big show. He's going to be set up there. Um, so I'm going to have to talk to Eric about that. We were talking about uh, heading out to Philly here sometime soon. Here's a lot of uh, card shops out there, antique malls, and a lot of cool stuff. It's about four and a half, five hours away from us. But uh, Eric is definitely talking about doing some more traveling on weekends, taking some time off, and uh, hitting the road and checking stuff out. So that's definitely something that we want to check out. And um, appreciate the heads up too, Boom Slang. And thank you for that five dollar super chat. Please, if you're not sub the sub to Boom Slang, please check him out. Only 27 away from 500. There's 76 people in here right now. Um, if you guys aren't sub to him, please check him out. I know he's doing a big giveaway at 500, which will be pretty sweet. I actually have a package going out to you here real soon, Boom Slang. Um, trying to get caught up on uh, FMF responses here this week. Hopefully, maybe we'll do that. But uh, thanks again, man. Please check Boom Slang out. That's heads up. Not sure what, the, what will happen with those here, but uh, here's another one you guys may have seen on Eric's channel. 
superstar standups with a bunch of moldy rotten candy i want to say this was two dollars for this box which is i don't know i think it's a good deal considering i think a box of these on ebay is like 20 or 30 bucks with shipping but uh they're basically candy dispensers candy collectible with more faces on there nolan ryan jackson ryan sandberg in the front there's 36 in the set 36 in here i think but um paul else says those are almost as bad as tops kids you and your tops kids man you hate it you hate that set but these are two bucks, so I figured I couldn't go wrong getting a collectible like that. For a whole box, pretty sweet. I will take it, especially with Griffey and a couple other names like that. Cool collectible overall, though. Bunch of rotten candy. Something that I won't try is that candy. I'd try an old gum, but uh, something I won't do is that candy. So that's that. Some singles. Also, a power pad. An original power pad for Nintendo, the NES, in the original box. Whenever I uh, asked about it, I was like, well, you know, does that still work? She's like, it's never been out of the box. So it's open, new, new and open box. Pretty sick. I think I paid 15 or 20 bucks for that. So I thought that was a super good deal. The original power pad. Um, when I see the power pad, one thing that comes to mind is the AVG episode from Money More from Power Rangers. Where he's wearing that like a cape. <laughs> power pad power. Oh, it's sick. It's sick. You got to check it out. Bunch of wax boxes. Some singles, not a whole lot of singles, but this Necro is pretty sick. I almost bought this at Ladies, on, or not Ladies, Rogers on Friday. Uh, I was talking to a guy. I actually made a video there, but I don't know. It's not that great. I filmed it on my phone, but it's kind of shaky and bouncing around. So I'm not sure if I'm ever actually going to use it or not. But this dude um, had some nice vintage cards, had a dollar bin. So I bought some stuff off him and talked to him for a while. He used to have a card shop instead of a card show. It was like in the 90s. Um, but really cool guy all around. Didn't catch his name. But... Uh, yeah, nice Phil Necro rookie card. I want to say he had it for like 30 bucks. I want to say. I found it today from Dave at uh, the Duncansville Antique Mall for 10 bucks. So not, obviously not the best condition. A little rounded off corners there, but still very nice. Not really sun faded at all. And the centering is pretty nice on it as well too for a Necro rookie. Didn't have that one for my PC, so pretty stoked about that for 10 bucks. And stopped at Juni Attic Cards today also in Altoona. Picked a Bruce Sutter card, uh, rookie card, for 10 bucks today. I wasn't sure if I had this in my rookie collection or not, but Hall of Famer Bruce Sutter. Nice one there overall. 77 tops. Nice shape. No gum stain. Nothing like that. Um, it's a nice Sutter rookie card. And this is also from Ladies. I think I paid a quarter for this. I picked up the Topps Chrome Barry Zito Ben Sheets rookie card for like a buck not too long ago. I think this is about a quarter, so... Two solid players there, Barry Zeter and Ben Sheets, rookie card. And then the dollar bin at Rogers. Uh, Lance Parrish, rookie card. Dale Murphy's second year card, 78 tops. So that's pretty cool. Bo Diaz, rest in peace to Bo Diaz. But uh, nice shape on the Dale Murphy. Had that one already, but uh, I figured I'd probably give it away at some point or something like that. I'm trying to go back and catch up on some of these comments <laughs> RMM says Necro looks e a whole even as a rookie. Charlie Huff syndrome. <laughs> he definitely does. And uh, Keith Hernandez, 75 tops for a buck. Couldn't pass it up, even though I have it already. Obviously, it's hard to find this card in good condition, but for a dollar. Won't pass up the Hernandez rookie and two Lou Whitaker rookie cards for a buck apiece. So 78 tops, Lou Whitaker. Couldn't pass those up either. Give those away at some point. I think I have a couple of this card already, but couldn't turn it down for a buck. And... Also, this is pretty cool. Maybe you guys know what this is because I've never seen it. I want to say I paid 50 cents for this today. It's a Nomo rookie card, 95 Bowman's Best. I hate that it's in this stupid plastic thing. And there's like two random cards. I didn't even look at these yet. But uh, Topps Full Shot, Big Hurt, two Big Hurts, and Roberto Almar. So two Hall of Famers here. Those are kind of cool. I have no idea what these are. I guess from 93 Tops. That's kind of cool. Never, ever seen these before. 21 cards in the set, but uh, randomly stashed away in there. Two our super chat again for John the Nage. He says they didn't remember to ring me up for my Whitaker. Really? That's pretty sick, man. That is pretty sick. Thank you very much for that. Here is a Nomo um, Bowman's Best, and it's a refractor, but I have no idea uh, about this card at all. I actually just bought this rookie card, the original one, the other day for a few bucks at the baseball card exchange. Um, so this is like a jumbo card or a, I don't know if it's, I have no idea, a box topper or what it is. But uh, 
That's what I thought, Jesse. A box top, maybe? But pretty sick. No more rookie card refractor. So for 50 cents, super good deal um, at Ladies Flea Market. So pretty stoked about that one. I even tried looking in the Beckett Almanac to see what this is even called. And I, they're not even listed in there. So I have no idea. Legion says they're promos. That's pretty sick. It's a nice one to get, though, the, the Nomo. I'll definitely hang on to that one. And for it to be a, a refractor, too, is pretty sick. And then uh, Juniata today. Juniata is also a really awesome card shop in Altoona or outside Altoona. Not sure what the exact area is, but uh, Steve there is a really awesome guy. I bought a few things off him. I actually bought um, a wax box off him and some supplies and everything else. Uh, great all-around card shop. He's been in business for a long time. I'm sure you guys saw Eric's video on his shop. But on the way out, he gave me a few packs here for National Baseball Card Day. And he tossed in a Vladdy Guerrero Jr. rookie card, which is pretty sick. I didn't have this one. So nice Vladdy Jr. And then Bryce Harper. A lot of Bryce Harper haters out there. him doing pretty bad this season. But um, two packs of these with uh, Eloy Jimenez and Francisco Lindor in the back of there. So I figured we uh, would rip these open now on camera and check out what's in here. I think Eric got a couple of these, too, for National Baseball Card Day, but not really sure what these are all about. So Lindor in the back, nice one. Trey Mancini. <laughs> Two our Super Chat from Dallas Foster. Says Bryce Harper, thumbs down. Knew that was going to Knew that was coming. Thank you very much for that. Manny Machado, Verlander, and Mookie Betts. So not a bad pack there, really, at all. These kind of remind me of, like, top of the class. And the Jimenez on the back of this one, pretty cool. See what's in here. I'm not sure if these have any value to them or not, but uh, nice rookie card there. Blake Snell, Evan Longoria, Jorge Alfaro, and Marcus Stroman. So, not familiar with a couple of those players there, but uh, the Eloy card's pretty nice. Nice rookie card there. So, cool packs there. Like I said, you just tossed those in on the way out. Very cool guy. Steve at Juniata Cards. Always try to stop there when I'm in the area. And we have some ripping to do here, guys. We have some ripping to do. RM says, no autos in the National Baseball card packs. I don't know if there's, if there's autos in there or not. So some wax boxes here. A couple pickups from Rogers. I always buy these when I see them, if they're cheaper than under 10 bucks. 91 Studio. I usually send these off to people and things of that nature. And at Junietta. Hey, Sean Tiford. Thank you very much for all those boxes, man. That was... Epic, super epic on the FMF, man. That one box I opened was insane. I'm still trying to get over the shock of everything that was in there. I know everyone else can agree with me on that. So we're gonna probably do a video every day this week, um, different things. Tomorrow we'll probably do box number two of what Sean Tiford sent. Uh, we'll pick another one of those, and then Tuesday we'll do Turn Back the Clock Tuesday, and then Wednesday we'll probably do another one of those boxes. We'll, we'll uh, spread them out. Chris Weaver says, Sean Tiford a legend. He definitely is, man. That was epic i had I, I like when i first uh felt that box i thought it was just a bunch of like junk wax air commons that would be thrown in there because i've seen that happen before and i was, like wasn't expecting anywhere near what was inside there when i opened it up man it was like a bright light blinded me when i opened it up paul also says 2006 tops one of the first since i collect that's pretty awesome pick this up i usually don't go this far into the future at all but uh i figured it'd be fun to check these out maybe try to pull an auto or something like that series one 2006 tops. Look for new rookie card. I guess that's the first year they started putting rookie cards on, on the cards there, which is kind of cool. Two dollars super chat from Dallas Foster says Sean Tiefer is the legend. He definitely is, and please make sure you subscribe to Dallas Foster as well. He's doing videos now too. Thank you very much for that, and thank you, Sean. Um, just wow, amazed by uh, the stuff in there. So we'll do this sometime in the future. This Tuesday is going to be 96 Bowman, which will be a fun one because that's like kind of the tail end of my collecting days in 96 Bowman. I stopped in like 97, so I don't even know if I really had any of these other than like maybe Jose Guillen rookie card. There's also uh, foil cards in here and also an insert set, which is kind of uh, weird for Bowman. I think it was the first year they started doing inserts. Uh, Player of the Year cards for minor leaguers. So, we'll be doing that on Tuesday. Checking that out. And this will be sometime in the future. Those six tops. You can watch me butcher a bunch of names. I'm sure that will be interesting for everyone to see that. <laughs> Gourmade says his daughter's demanding a rematch. Jake the Snake and Andre the Giant versus Barbie and Cinderella is going down now. That's pretty sick. And a $5 super chat from Jonathan H. 
It says, see, Sean Tiford said it gets better. That means a box of one-touch Chris Sabo cards. That's going to be the best day ever. <laughs> oh, I, I sure hope not, man. I, I got plenty of Sabos coming to me as it is, man. They're coming out my freaking ears right now. I have so many Sabos sitting around next to me. I can only imagine what uh, what's in store for us the rest of these Sean Tiford boxes. I just uh, am overwhelmed by that first one alone, so... <laughs> I don't know if I can handle a bunch of Sabos. But two boxes here. These were sick. This is a ladies pickup, too. Or not ladies, Rogers. The same guy. I was like, wow, what do you want for those 81 Fleer? I actually bought a box of these at the National, too. These were a buck a pack. Only a dollar a pack for 81 Fleer, which is an amazing deal. I think there's like 24 packs in here. So there's a few missing. But um, only a dollar a pack. And I ripped one of them open while I was standing there. And uh, he's like, yeah, go ahead and check it out. Didn't pull anything too great. Pulled a Gary Carter out of there. So there was one Hall of Famer in the first pack. Obviously, if you're searching packs, you're not going to pull a Gary Carter out. But um, I figured we might rip a couple of these open. And then other ones we will send off to people like normal. And then he also had this box, too. I want to say I paid 5 bucks for this. 97 Pinnacle. So I don't even know if I ever even saw these um, because I was, like, done collecting 97. But these are those, like, weird deceiving boxes that are only halfway full. Like, they feel like they're, like... I don't know, a full box for the most part, but there is only six packs in here, six packs per box, and a screw-down card holder in there is hiding at the bottom. So he originally wanted, I think, ten for these, and I was like, well, it's not a full box, so he's like, all right, five. So I figured rip these open too, and it says, look underneath this protective block to find your bonus. Hopefully the bonus is still in here. This wedge out of here. It is. These were all the craze back then. The four screw card holders. There was no one touch back then. This was it. So you had to really do your work, put in the effort to protect your cards back then. I, I hated it. It was real. It was real annoying. I still come across people that have collections in uh, the four screw down cases. And it's like, oh god, why? Why is that? I think I have one right next to me right now. At least I did. It was a Barry Bonds that I found in that two dollar box. That somebody had in a screw down case. So it's like, do I really want to go through the effort of taking this out just to get the Barry Bonds on his rubber deck? Maybe I'm just lazy, I don't know. But um, $5 Super Chat in Dallas Foster says, I can't imagine the power your house is generating with those Sabos. Tread lightly. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> There's so many Sabos in here, it's overwhelming. And $2 Super Chat from Dream Big Productions says, by the way, do you still like Barney the Purple Dinosaur? Um, I have not watched Barney the Purple Dinosaur in a very, very long time, Dream Big. It has been a long time, man. How about you? Are you a fan of Barney the Purple Dinosaur? I remember watching that when I was a little kid. I don't even know if, it's, if Barney is still on TV anymore. I'm not even sure. They'll let me know if it is. It might be, still be on PBS. Hopefully these aren't open. I guess they're not open. Thank you, Dream Big. Please check out Dream Big when you get a chance. I think he has like 1,500 subs. So 97 Pinnacle, 10 cards per pack. I'm not even sure who's in this set. Maybe like Brian Giles' rookie card. 97 was a pretty crappy year for rookie cards other than David Ortiz. And I don't think that uh, Ortiz was actually in this set. He was an ultra and Fleer. But we'll rip those open. Paul says Barney was canceled, but they still show reruns on PBS. <laughs> Sean Teaver says, I'd like to see a Sabo card and a screw down made from those glasses. That would be so epic. Why don't they have Sabo relic cards that are, uh, you know, pieces of his rec specs? That would be so epic. So we're going to rip these packs open, rip a few of them open, rip the candy can open. But uh, this is pretty sick, too, this power pad. I was stoked on that. For only 20 bucks or 15 bucks, whatever it was, uh, there goes the candy cane. But you can see here, like, it looks like it's never been taken out. It's all wrapped up and everything. But original power pad that some of us had when we were kids. I didn't have when I was a kid. I didn't have the uh, power glove either. I guess I was deprived. Chet Lemon says, Jose Cruz Jr. Rookie was a 97. It definitely was a 97. And I was so pumped because I pulled that out of a pack, his 97 Bowman card. And um, it was like, I think book value back then was like 50 bucks. And then within a month, it was like a nickel. <laughs> I still have the Jose Cruz Jr. card in a screw down case from back then. It's actually my rookie card box. I just look at it sometimes and get, get bummed out about it. Before we rip open these, uh, the, the last thing I want to show you before we go into that, 
This is pretty sick too. Another Rogers find. You guys know that I'm a big Indiana Jones fan. So these huge um, promotional seven up posters. Let me take this off the tripod here. So these are seven up posters from Temple of Doom promoting the movie from 84. And there's four of them in a set. So four is in a set and uh, they actually all fit together to make one enormous poster here, as you can see there. I'm not going to show you because it's too hard because of how big they are. But these are huge. I'm not sure if I'm going to like get individual frames for these and put them side by side on the wall and actually piece together this whole set. But pretty sick, though. This is only 15 bucks for all four of these. I looked on eBay, too, and um, there's one person on there that has them now. I want to say they're like 60 bucks or something like that. So, maybe always been a huge Indiana Jones fan. Um, that's pretty sweet. Seven up posters, pretty hard to come by. So, 15 bucks for those. Pretty cool find, I think. Not sure if I'll go buy frames for those, if I'll sell them. I don't know what I'll do, but uh, I have a lot of crap stocked up here that I need to start doing something with. But um, anything else to show you guys? I don't think so for now. I'll start ripping some packs open, I guess. I missed a super chat from Jonathan H for five bucks. It says, I know how to troll you back. Send you your junior SP to a bunch of other amazing cards and screw down cases, and I'll strip the screws. Gilkey Revenge. That'll be the worst punishment ever. I'm sure you guys, I, don't, I didn't tell you yet, but uh, I've been trying to track down the Derek Jeter SP, 93 SP card. I used to have when I was a kid, and um, whatever. It got lost somewhere along the way. So now that that card is skyrocketing in price and everyone's paying ridiculous amounts for it, and probably even more so next year when it gets an Hall of Fame, um, I want to try to track it down now. I was looking forward today to card shop. Couldn't find it. Jonathan H. found it in an antique mall earlier today. He sent me a picture of it, and I was like, holy crap, man. Two hour tag on it. He was able to scoop it for me for 150, and it's in pretty nice shape too overall. So, pretty stoked about that. And now he's threatening to put a screw on case, <laughs> strip the screws out. That would be absolutely awful. I would cry myself to sleep. But uh, really stoked about that. Picking that up finally. I couldn't tell you the last time I paid 150 bucks for a card. So it's been quite a while. Usually going to flea markets, you pay a dollar for most rookie cards from the junk wax era. RM says. Eric is wise to buy up Bonds. Rookie is going to be worth a fortune someday. Yeah, he definitely thinks so. He has so many of that card. So many of the 87 tops Bonds. I love that card, too. He probably has like 500. Let's check out these 97 Pinnacle. See if there's any like inserts in here uh, we can pull. Here's some. Museum collection. Those are always cool. One of nine packs. Shades. They're still doing Shades in 97. Um, remember those from back in the day, from like early 92, 93 Pinnacle. So, I wouldn't say we have great odds of pulling anything besides museum collection, but you never know. These are like old school blaster boxes. You can see Greg Max on the back. And is it, it's not an insert card, but Greg Max clout card. I have no idea what these even look like. Uh, okay, these are the gold ones. And they're probably bricked together, and yes, they are bricked together very badly. Jeff Bagwell is on the front here. Are we going to have paper loss? We are going to have paper loss. That sucks. Vinny Castilla, these might have to go in the freezer. This, this is freaking terrible. This is like worse than 93 per deck. How's that possible? And there's a Bonds in there too. It sucks. And the Bonds got pretty muffed up there. I don't even know how I want to look at the rest of these until they're put in the freezer. I'm going to skip on those. I don't want to pull like some nice insert card to ruin that Maddox. So that sucks. So if you're buying 97 Pinnacle, be very, very careful about that because, well, you can see why. But five bucks of those, I'll put them in the freezer or whatever, or actually microwave, I think seems to work the best. We'll microwave them. Maybe I'll even make a video about it, microwaving baseball cards. I feel like people could uh, definitely, I don't know, use the advice, trial and error it, because that happens way too often and it sucks. Two dollar super chat from Jonathan H. It says, I must teach you the Ben method, grasshopper. <laughs> I don't know the Ben method. Like, there's some weird method. I don't, I don't know if Eric even knows it, but um, obviously not cracking them. But there's like some weird Ben method that I don't trust myself to even do because I'm probably running them worse than prying them apart like I am. So those will get nuked in the microwave. Let's check out 81 tops. A buck a pack for these. Couldn't go wrong at all. Crazy deal. Joseph season 91 Fleer wouldn't stick on you. <laughs> that is true. 91 Fleer will always be there. In the end, 91 Fleer will always be there. And let's. there's a piece of gum here. I don't know if I want to try that or not. It's like soggy. 
But a buck a pack for anyone fleer. I, ha I have, uh, I want to say, a box or two of these. So we'll be doing a break on these at some point. But uh, best cards in here, Kirk Gibson rookie card um, is the best one. And there's some others like Henderson second years in here. <laughs> Allegiance says do not eat that. I thought about eating it, but I didn't yet. So you never know if these are searched or not. After the first pack, I wasn't really... So kind of a crap pack there. First pack, like I said, I had Gary Carter in it. I like to save these and send them to people, but like that kind of looks like it was resealed at one point. As yeah, Mike Socher rookie card. That's pretty sick. Uh, Sean Tiford actually sent me that card, and I was real hyped about it because uh, it's one I don't come across in my rookie search. And, uh, yeah, it's Mike Socher rookie card. Not a lot of value to it, but I think book value on it's like a buck fifty, but still pretty cool though. To now have two of that card, probably not a searchable card. Bruce Suter is a Hall of Famer. Picked up his rookie card earlier. And another super chat from John H for five bucks is when troubleshooting your headaches, did you tell the doctor your tendency to chew decades old gum? <laughs> that was definitely one thing I left out of there, Jonathan H. I kind of left that out. There's uh, Mr. October there, pretty nice. Mr. Baseball, Reggie Jackson, Ron Say. And I kind of like want to open all these up now. Excuse my greed, but I couldn't tell you the last time I opened 81 Fleer. I'm like pretty excited about it. You could buy a box of these, I don't know, a non-authenticated box of these, probably like, I don't know, 60, 80 bucks around there if you look on eBay. So not too much for a uh, box of 81. Like you would think, at least. John Wathen might be in here. I kind of want to eat this gum, too. But uh, Joe Manson says there's a lot of airs in there. Yeah, there is a lot of airs in here. 82 Fleer, too. Uh, there's um, a couple 82 Fleer airs that I don't want to get my hands on. I actually bought one recently for a few bucks and ended up not being the air card. I was pretty pissed about that. In 82. Boom says says adult chat. You put them under your mattress after <laughs> after a whoopee session <laughs> with your significant other. The cards will still be destroyed with paper loss, but at least you had fun doing it. Well, that's a good method. I don't know if we can make a video about that. <laughs> that's pretty hilarious. Hey, Michael Wetzel. Brittany is feeling a lot better, I'd say. Hey, there's Danny Angie rookie card. That's a nice one, too. Nice. Not sure if that was one that people were really looking for to pull out of the pack, but uh, another rookie card. Nice. It's a nice shape, too, for not being authenticated. So two pretty cool rookie cards there so far. And there's a Stargell card. I don't have too many Stargells. So that's pretty cool. Nice Yaz. 400 club. Rick Suckler, I think that's his second year card. Bob Boone. Yeah, Harold Baines is an 81, huh? I forgot about Harold Baines. I shouldn't forget about him. He's in the Hall of Fame. Going places, basketball player, right? Yep, Danny was also a basketball player. Rock Reigns. Uh, Rock Reigns, I don't believe, is an 81 Fleer. I don't think he is. Bert Blalem is a Hall of Famer. I don't think Rock Reigns is in here. He's an 81 Don Russ. It's actually Fernando Valenzuela's rookie card. I'm not sure if that's any kind of error or not. Fernand Valenzuela. But another nice one, though. Um, very, very nice shape. Nice corners. Very nice corners. So, Bill Buckner. Some nice cards so far. And Art Howe. So a couple good rookies. Fernando Valenzuela. Definitely a nice one. Not a Hall of Famer, but uh, very solid pitching career. Gums, not too bad either. The point of being stuck on the cards. Maybe I spoke too early. Buddy Bell. Maybe we'll find 
the uh, Banes in here. Yeah, if Tim Raines is in here, I don't think I've ever seen the card then. I thought he was left out of Fleer, unless he's in like, unless he's put in later on the high number. I don't remember ever seeing that card. Like he was in tops, he's putting the high number. Jim Palmer is a good one. Hall of Famer Jim Palmer. Craig Lezinski. Got a bunch of his cards from Sean Tiford recently. On Friday. And Joe Necro. Dave Concepcion. And we got like a Nolan Ryan or something like that. Or some other Hall of Famers. Buck a pack. Could not uh, pass these up. Amazing deal. Tony LaRussa, Hal McRae, there's a nice Aussie Smith, very nice card there, very nice, these cards, like I said, these are sharp too, the corners are all very sharp for being in an open box, Night 2 Beckett, RMM grabbed, most valuable cards, Henderson second year, and Nolan Ryan, but uh, he said Baines is in here as well as Jeff Rear End. Nice Aussie, though. I want to say, I don't know if uh, John H. sent me that card recently or not. I think he did. He sent me a couple of Aussies, older ones from the early 80s. Nice Dave Winfield. And Johnny Bench. Another nice one, too. So I don't think these packs are searched at all. Pretty cool. I have, I think, all the other cards in this set, so I don't know if I want to keep opening these or not. I think I'm going to save some of these for you guys. Send off. You guys going to have fun, because I have the Gibson. It's a nice one. Triple threat for the Phillies. Tell you, Martin, if you're still in here. Big Phillies fan. Open up one more, and then uh, I'll save the rest. Then we'll go on to the candy cane. I want to say... You know what? Screw it. There's only five packs left. We'll open all of them. Chris Rivers' pack, fresh rookies. Yeah, it's awesome. I don't, I don't open older cards. Another Fernando Valenzuela rookie card. Very nice. That's awesome. Two Fernando rookie cards. Dennis Martinez. That's pretty sick. Eddie Murray, horribly off center, but uh, still pretty cool. Looking forward to doing a break on these uh, sometime in the future. Like I said, we'll do 96 Bowman, and then we'll probably go back to the 80s again and do like 86 Don Russ, 87 Don Russ. I have a bunch of boxes that I'm sitting on for future breaks that I'm looking forward to. Um, <laughs> Tom G says Christmas baseball candy cane in July, August. Only on the pass is alive. You better believe it, man. I'm pumped about that. George Brett's a nice one, too. Pretty off-center, but still cool. Kind of got screwed over there. Yeah, I was I was stoked about that. Like I was saying, uh, those packs were searched and ripped open, but I think I paid two bucks for that. But I wanted, I just wanted the candy cane. Like, those are hard to find. If you go on eBay and type in, like, baseball card candy cane or sports card candy cane, like, people are buying those for, like, freaking, I don't know, 30, 40 bucks on eBay. Don Zimmerman, or Don Zimmerman, I mean. Rod Carew. Is a good one, so some nice ones in there. But I want to give those away. I have I have another one already, but for Christmas this year, Santa is coming. He is sending baseball cards out in packs and rookies. So um, I have two of them to give away now. So that's how I looked at it. It's three bucks for the candy cane to send off to somebody. I don't know how we'll do it yet. We have two packs left after this one. Mike Stanton, Billy Martin. Not the middle finger Martin card. Dickie Thon. That's actually Dickie Thon's rookie card, I want to say. Another triple threat card there. That's pretty cool. Two of those. No John Wathen yet. What's going on? I feel like there's a pack hiding underneath there. So two more packs here. Frank's card corner says, I collected this set as a kid. I'm missing three cards. Jeez. Well, let me know which ones they are. If you see them in here, let me know. I'll send them to you. I will send them to you free of charge, man. If you see the three cards you need.
Bob Walk. I think that's actually Bob Walk's reading. Win McCovey. Nice one there. Rest in peace, Win McCovey. Kind of a weird, uh, I don't know, ink stain there on the corner. <laughs> Sean says, Wild Water down the Sabo with the rest of the team. <laughs> Sparky Lyle. And one more pack left. Will we find the Gibson in here or the Baines or the Reigns? Nice. Henderson's second year card and it sucks as it gum stuck to it. Very nice. Very nice condition, too. This is probably actually, uh, I think he has two cards in this set. But still, pretty sick. Second year Henderson. Not bad at all. Most stolen bases. Very nice. Alan Trammell is a Hall of Famer, so that's nice, too. Fred Lynn. Louis Tion. Craig Nettles. And not bad at all. Not too bad. Pretty good rookies in there. Fernando Valenzuela twice. Some Hall of Famers. RM says that Henderson SB car was 10 bucks back in 92. And not, not too bad at all. That was definitely a good time going through those. And they're all in nice shape, too. Other than uh, being off-center for a few of them. Keyboard Warrior Raggedy B comes in here. And got put in timeout. <laughs> Loser. So, next thing we have up is this candy cane ripped open packs already. Um, and pickle inside. That's actually not open. So everything else is in here is open, but uh, not that. So let's check that out. I said the whole reason I bought this was to fill up with uh, packs and cards to send off to people this holiday season. Thank you guys for taking care of that. But 2,000 tops, hopefully they're not bricked up. I guess they're all 2,000 tops. But for two bucks, like I said, I wanted the uh, actual candy cane itself. Check out, see what's in here. Maybe there's some uh, decent rookies or even Hall of Famers. Sheffield on top there. Delgado. So pretty nice shape for being bounced around the candy cane for all these years. Tati Sr., and checklist. Chet Lemon says, are you planning any more videos of Joe's Card Corral? Uh, I wasn't planning on it. Did you guys enjoy that? Maybe the uh, Barry Zito will be in here and Ben Sheets. I forget who, uh, what other rookie cards are in here. But uh, these are nice because they're not stuck together. I feel like 2000 Tops is always notorious for that. Juan Gonzalez. Tim Raines. Why well, couldn't that have been an 81 Fleer? Preston Wilson. So RMM says that Craig Nettles could be an error card. That's pretty sweet. I'm not sure what the error is to check that out. Uh, maybe possibly an insert card in here. <laughs> John says I'll pay you $2 to read my last $2 Super Chat. I didn't even see it. <laughs> There's a $2 Super Chat from John H. says, Ricky Base card is the same pose looking the other way. I thought that card looked familiar. So there is two cards in that set for Henderson. Um, thank you very much for that, John H. I appreciate that. Jason Giambi, Todd Walker, and a Nomar Garcia Para. Insert card there. Power player. That's pretty sweet. Not bad from a search pack. And RM says, error is Craig. Correction is Greg Nettles. Huh, I'll have to go back and check that out. So, no more insert card. Pretty sweet from a search pack. Bernie Williams. Chipper Jones. Send that off to Jason Wento. Chipper Jones fan. We've got a package going out to you this week, Jason. David Cohn and a checklist card. And we have like four more packs up after this one. Thanks, Boom Slang. Some not notable rookie cards. Carlos Beltron. It's a nice one. <laughs> Jason says, best player to put in your bikes, bike spokes, Craig Council. Our Beltron. It's a nice Clemens. The Yankees there. Pat Burrell, that's actually his second year card, maybe third year card. Don't have that one though. Nice tattoos here, highlights. Hey, Casey Lewis. Another insert card in here. There's a nice Conseco with the Rays. I think there's an insert card in here, could be wrong. Another Beltron card. Not really a bad one though. 
Could be worse. And we do have another insert card. It's Barry Bonds. So, a nice one. Like I said, search pack for, hopefully, future Hall of Famer Barry Bonds. A lot of people might disagree with that, but uh, Todd Pratt, not an insert card. It's a regular base card. And who we have here in our Pat Burrell. And some repeats. Three packs left. SF Cards with a $2 Super Chat. Says, my sub goal was four fifty. Well, thank you very much for that Super Chat. Please check him out. Try him to four fifty. What are you at now, SF Cards? I don't know if I'm subbed to you or not, but I will be once the video is over. I have 106 people in here. Please check out SF Cards. You give him a sub. Only takes a second. It's a nice uh, stolen bases card for Henderson there. Base card, but still pretty cool. Hall of Famer Henderson. Frank Thomas. I have pretty good luck with search packs. I feel like... The last several rounds of search packs that I opened, didn't realize that they were searched. I always end up pulling Hall of Famers and insert cards, so pretty cool. People put them back in their wrapper just for safekeeping, I guess, which is a terrible way to safekeep your cards, I guess, overall, but uh, end up lucking out most of the time. So for two bucks, not a bad buy at all uh, for some inserts. SF cards are 427, so he's getting very close to 450. Well, you'll have 428 once the live stream's over because I'll sub to you. Hopefully, uh, everybody else does too. Really appreciate that. Jose Lima, a few good years there. Another insert card, it's A-Royd, as some people like to call them. There's a Boggs, 20th century best, but an A-Rod perennial all-stars. These are nice cards, too. I like these. Casey Lewis, sub to you. Thank you. But uh, A-Royd, as some people may call them, but a uh, nice insert overall. Another Beltron. <laughs> Matt Lewis's pay rod. And Billy Wagner, I always like Billy Wagner. Paul L says he hates a rod. Last pack here. Um, I don't think I have anything else to show you guys. I think that is about it. I think there's one more thing I'll show you. I picked this up for Jonathan H. It's coming his way. Um, pretty cool. This is actually a Junior of Cards. Never seen it before, but uh, pretty sick, though. Nolan Ryan's Video Guide to Card Collecting. So uh, we'll check out and see what Nolan has to say about card collecting. It's a half hour long. It's from 1991. I think this was like three bucks at uh, the card shop in Altoona. I was like, wow, that's sick. I don't know what it's doing there, but uh, it's obviously in here for me to buy it and send to Jonathan H. He's a huge Nolan fan. So um, I have v VCR too, so I'll definitely check that out before I send it to him. See what it's all about, but pretty cool. Nolan Ryan giving you advice on card collecting. Hopefully he tells you not to buy 91 Fleer. I wonder if that's in there, except for his 91 Fleer, of course. Matt Lewis is Nolan the Goat. Another insert card in here, pretty good for search packs. A $5 super chat from Jonathan H. I hope it mentions burning junk wax and everything not Nolan Ryan related. I will take that as gospel. <laughs> Thanks, man. Adrian Veltri, future Hoffer here. Jose Vidro. And Alfonso Soriano. Uh, I think that's his second year card. It might actually be his rookie card. I can't remember. I think he's in tops traded, though. 99 tops traded. But uh, not too bad there. David Cohn and Todd Helton. I know Chris Weaver's a Todd Helton fan. 21st Century Tops. That's pretty cool, though. I like the design on these. Maybe we'll do a break on these someday. Check those out. I wasn't collecting in 2000, so. Paul Ellis' Junk Wax Hands Across America. No doubt about it, man. Roberto Almar, Joe McEwing, Brian Hunter, Adolis Perez, and Henry Rodriguez ends that pack out. So not too bad for search packs. A1 Fleer is pretty sick, too. Overall, I think it was a pretty good weekend. A lot of um, hidden treasures, I think. A lot of junk as well, or some people might call it junk, but uh, some cool stuff overall. The power pad's sick. I'm going to have to actually try that on where like a cape, like AVGN. This, I don't know if I'll open this or not. Maybe I'll send that off to somebody at some point. But uh, 10 cards in here that are probably all viciously banged up and have rounded off corners. What an awful idea by Pinnacle, a.k.a. score, to do this. I think they did 97, too, as a first year forward since 98. Scott Rowland. But uh, that is it for the weekend recap. I want to thank you guys for joining us. Um, let me know down below in the comments what uh, what your favorite thing was that I picked up. Um, and please like and subscribe if you're not already. And I will see you guys tomorrow night for some more fun with uh, packages from Sean Tiford. We have another one of those boxes coming up tomorrow night. I don't know if it will be live stream or if it will be standard. But um, we'll check out and see what the next package holds from Sean Tiford. 
I want to thank you guys all for being here and enjoy what's left of your weekend. Um, I will see you guys very soon. Thanks again.